to the student today's topic is about clinical correlation of brachial plexus or we can say brachial plexus 2 in the previous topic uh, we have mentioned about how to draw the brachial plexus in this topic we will see about what is ops point what is clunky's paralysis and what is horner's syndrome along with the horner syndrome i mentioned about the winging of scapula also So let's know about OPS point and OPS paralysis. This OPS point is also known as upper plexus injury. So OPS point, it is a region of upper trunk of brachial plexus where six knobs meet as follows. So we have C5, C6, then we have uh, the upper trunk. So the knob that is in the upper trunk, we have suprascapular knob, knob to subclavius. And from here, the two division, anterior division and the posterior division of upper trunk. So, if the injury is here in the upper trunk of the brachial plexus, that condition is known as the OPS paralysis. So, OPS paralysis is caused due to injury of upper trunk of brachial plexus that is near the OPS point. So, what are the cause? It can be excessive increase in angle between the head and shoulder, which may occur by falling from the back of the horse and landing on the shoulder. Second, traction during birth of the child and third is during the anesthesia. The deformity related with the OPS paralysis are the arm is hanging by the side, it is adducted and it is medially rotated, we can see in the diagram and the forearm is extended and it is pronated and this deformity is known as policeman's tip deformity also known as porter's stiff hand deformity, also known as waiter's stiff hand deformity. So the knob root which is involved here is C5 and partly C6. The muscles which is paralyzed here is biceps, deltoid, brachialis, brachioradialis, supraspinatus, infraspinatus and supinator muscles. So we should know the action of all these muscles. Now what is the disability of the the OPS paralysis. So here adduction of the arm that is due to paralysis of deltoid muscles. It is supplied by the axillary knob. It means the axillary knob is damaged. So we have the medial rotation of the arm that is due to paralysis of supraspinatus, infraspinatus and teres minor. Supraspinatus and infraspinatus is supplied by the suprascapular knob while teres minor is supplied by axillary knob. It means the both the knob is damaged here. Then we have the extension of the elbow due to paralysis of biceps brachii. Then we have the pronation of, of the forearm due to paralysis of biceps brachii. It means the biceps brachii is supplied by the musculocutaneous knob. So musculocutaneous knob is also damaged here. Then we have the loss of sensation along the outer aspect of the arm due to involvement of the root of C6 spinal knob. The next clinical correlation is clunky's paralysis that is lower trunk plexus injury. The knob root involved here in clunky's paralysis is C8 and T1 and some, sometimes C7 is also included. It is caused due to hyperabduction of the, the arm when one falls on an outstretched hand or an arm is pulled during the machinery work or during the, the delivery that is extended arm in the bridge presentation. And the clinical features related to clumpage paralysis are claw hand that is due to paralysis of flexor of the wrist as well as the finger and the knob root which is involved here is C6, C7, C8 and all the intrinsic muscles of the hand that is all the small small the muscles which is present in the hand which is supplied by mostly by the ulnar knob. So we have the root value C8 and T1 and there is loss of sensation along the medial border of the forearm and the hand. And one more clinical condition that is known as the Horner's syndrome. The next syndrome is known as Horner syndrome, which is characterized by partial tosis, meiosis, anhydrosis, and ophthalmos due to involvement of sympathetic fibers supplying head and neck, which leaves the spinal cord through the T1 segments. Now we can see here the blue color line in the diagram is indicating that is known as the first order neuron. 
the red color is known as second order neuron and the green color is now known as third order neuron the first order neuron is arising or the fibers or sympathetic fibers is arising from the hypothalamus now this fibers runs along with the brain stem it will reach to the spinal cord now near the spinal cord the second segment or we can say the second order neuron is arising or fibers is arising which is passing through the t1 spinal segment then it reach near the superior cervical ganglion and from the superior cervical ganglion can you see here we have the the common carotid artery near the bifurcation of the common carotid artery it also is having supply with the the skin of the face that is the sweat gland and the fibers runs upwards and it will reach to the eyeball so can you see the knob here that is known as the short ciliary knob it means this fibers is having connection with the superior tarsal muscle then we have the long ciliary knob this is also having some connection with the the pupils of the eyes right so it means if the t1 spinal segment is damaged here right near the lower trunk of the brachial plexus we have the condition that is known as ptosis meiosis and hydrosis and 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 we have the anophthalmos what is this ptosis that is known as drooping of the upper eyelid you can see here in the diagram right then we have the meiosis we have excessive constriction of the pupil then we have anhydrosis that is a rare condition in which the sweat glands make little or no sweat we have the anophthalmos we have the posterior displacement of the eyeball within the orbit one more clinical aspect we can add here that is known as winging of scapula so that is due to damage of long thoracic knob which is also known as knob of bell also known as knob to serratus anterior so root value is c5 c6 and c7 so here the paralysis of serratus anterior muscles takes place right so due to injury of the long thoracic knob by the stab injury or during the removal of the breast tumor or the the tumor that is present in the mammary gland so these are the effect which can be seen whenever the long thoracic knob is damaged so we have the loss of protection of the scapula is weakened right then we have inferior angle and the middle border of scapula becomes the prominent when patient try to push his hand against the wall and producing a clinical condition that is known as winging of scapula